Hello my friends, we're back on Luminar Neo and today we will edit this image over here and turn it into hopefully this image over here. This is a little bit blurry and there you go, now it loaded and it's nice and sharp. So again, we'll go from this image to this image. Let's see how we do that. I will go back into my catalog and choose my raw file. As you can see, I shot at ISO 152 millimeter, F10, 3.2 second exposure with my Sony A7R4 and the 24 to 105 millimeter lens. First thing I wanna do, going into edit, I want to analyze my image. What do I wanna do with this image? Well, you can see there is like some faint sunset color there. I want to really enhance that and bring it out. And then I also need to, you know, fix the white balance because my white balance was completely wrong. Let's go into develop. White balance, I was shooting that morning some uh, dragonflies and when I shoot macro photography, I like to keep my white balance a lot cooler. I forgot to change it in camera, but we're shooting raw, so that is okay. We can change it in post. Into the develop tool over here go down onto the white balance and choose this color picker. Now, if you do not know how to use the color picker and to correct your white balance, you have to find something neutral onto your image, something that was 50% gray or something that was white. So for me on this image, I do know this boat was white, so I'll just click on it. And there you go, our white balance is corrected. Let's see, this is our before, this is our after, before and after. Now this image looks like it has a lot more potential. So what do we do next? I want to work on the exposure. I want to increase the exposure because this image, it is underexposed. So I will go with something like that. Then I also want to add some smart contrast. I will go around 23 and that looks good to me. Maybe I will take the highlights down just a tad, not too much and I will open up the shadows. I want to get a lot more uh, details into this boat over here. And that is looking a lot better. Let's see, this is our before and after. Before and after. So that was good, but it's looking very washed out. By the way, I really like the composition of this. This is, you know, when you have a lot of the sky and your subject is small on the edge of the frame, this is called negative space and it's very, very commonly used in landscapes. Now, how do we bring that color into the sky? Well, the first thing we can do is maybe add some vibrance. So I will add some vibrance, maybe around plus 24. And our develop tool so far, before and after, before and after, things are looking a lot better. I will close the develop tool and let's go work with some color. I will open the color tool and here I will work mostly with the HSL. Click down on this drop down menu and choose hue. For the hue, I do want to warm up the warm tones. And for that, I will move the yellows a little bit into the orange, the orange a little bit into the red and the red a little bit into magenta. I would also like to change the blue into something more cyan and cinematic. So I will take the hue of the blue down into the cyan. That is looking great. Next, we will work with saturation. For the saturation, I want to increase the saturation of the warm tones and decrease the saturation of the cool tones. So I will increase the yellows, I will increase the oranges, and I will increase the reds. And then the cool tones as our blues, I will take down the blues just a tiny little bit. So, so far our color panel, we have the before and after before and after. You see how nice these uh, warm tones are coming in? This is the before and after. Next, I want to add even more color. One tool that we can use to add more sunset colors is using the landscape tool. And my favorite slider into the landscape tool, it's golden hour. If I increase this golden hour, those sunsets really start coming in. And that looks a lot better. Let's see that before, this is our before and after, before and after. Maybe it's a little bit too much, I'll take it down just a little bit. Let's see that again, before and after. I really like the way it uh, touches this uh, poles from the boat, I think it's called the mast. So that is the before and after. 
That is looking good. How can we add even more color? Well, we can work with toning. And in toning, we have two different adjustments we can do. We can work with shadows and we can work with highlights. I would like to start with highlights first. So I select highlights, then I'll go to the amount 100% and I will also increase saturation at 100% so I can see exactly with which color I am working. Now I can take this hue and move it into the right until I get to some, you know, sunset colors. And I think 44, it's a great sunset color. And now I just reduce the saturation to something that looks nice to me. Maybe something like that. So far, this is our before and after, before and after. Now, we're kind of losing some of that blue, if you can see. We had more blue before and now we're kind of losing it. So I would like to add some of that blue back and I will do that working with the shadows. With the shadows selected, I will keep that mount at 100%. I will increase the saturation at 100%. And now I will choose a blue that looks right, like a cyan blue, and then, of course, reduce the saturation. Maybe something like that. Let's see now. This is the before and after, before and after. We also have a balance slider that shifts the balance between highlights and shadows. So if I move it to the right, I am putting more of these highlights into the image and ignoring the shadow adjustment that I did. If I go the other way around, I will add more of that shadow color that I added and it's gonna ignore the, the lights, the highlights that I added. So I think I like the way, the way it was. I'll leave it just where it was. Double click on the name of a tool if you want to reset it. You see, if I had it over here, I just double click on the balance, it just resets it and you don't have to go with the slider and try to find the exactly zero. So there you go, we'll keep it with that. Now it's looking a little bit too bright, so I want to maybe darken those blues. For that, I will go into the color again and I will work with the luminance. And I'll go to my blues and just take them down. That'll create a little bit more drama and contrast. Something like that. Now, it would probably be a good thing to add a little bit of structure to bring more sharpness into these boats. Like I said, I shot at 3.2 seconds exposure. So because in the water, things are moving a little bit, maybe things are not as sharp as I would like. So I'll add some structure, not too much. When you add too much structure, it really messes with the sky and the clouds. You could mask them out. I could mask them out, but I'm not going to do that. I will just add a little bit of structure and just let it be. Another tool that can make things bring to life is to add enhance. So I will go to the enhance tool and add some accent and that really brings things to life. Let's see. This is the before, this is the after, before and after. Let's take a look at all our whole image so far. Uh, if you click this eye over here, this is the before, and this is the after, before and after. That is such a big change and I'm very happy with our edits so far. But there's still a little bit more that I need to do. I do not like that the sky is way, way, way too bright around here and I would like to darken those edges to draw my viewers attention, you know, mostly towards the middle of the image. So for that, I would have to go into develop and let's see, we'll take the exposure down a little bit, maybe something like that. I'll go into masking and I will use a radial gradient. With the radial gradient selected, I would like to draw a circle right here and I wanna make it pretty big because I do want to protect my boat. I want that light to stay there. So maybe I'll go to something like that but as you can see now, the mask, it will show us this red overlay. The effect is happening outside of our radial gradient, so we need to invert it. The problem is, I think there is a bug over here. I cannot invert my mask. I don't know why this is happening. I've never had this happen before. So we will have to use a different tool. I will reset this and I'll go back to my adjustment, bring the exposure down. I'll go to mask and I will just use a brush. 
a very large soft brush make sure softness is 100 percent and i'll just paint on it i do like using the radial gradient i don't know what happened it was working until today and then today it just stopped working for me all right that is looking good i think i painted a little bit too much now this uh, cloud here i want it to be brighter so i can toggle between the the and the mask i can toggle between the paint and erase with the x key so if i click on x now i have an eraser and i can make my brush bigger and i can delete some of these edits from this cloud and now that looks better let's see this is the before this is the after before and after and that really draws your attention more in the middle of the image um what else can we do I feel like it still needs something else. I'm just going to add a little bit more white, maybe brighten it up a little bit. So into develop, I'll go into the whites and I'll increase the whites a little bit. Maybe bring down the blacks, not too much. All right. So let's see our image now. If you click on this eye underneath here, this is the before, this is the after. Before and after, we have come a long way and I really like the way this edit turned out. Now, if you're new to this channel, I do have a playlist uh, with like almost 90 videos on Luminar Neo where I go through all the all the tools with a lot of examples and explaining how they work. Please do go and watch that. Now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. And I'll see you in my next video.